A warm welcome to Business Daily on Trust TV. I am Yusuf Akogu. We begin with our top stories at this time. Take a look. Glad to have you back. Let's move uh, straight to the stock markets and look at what the data are saying. Uh, the markets are reopened today after a salad break, and uh, we will actually bring you some of the data that we have from the last trading day of the week, which was uh, on Thursday, 20th of uh, 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 April, before the salad break. Well, we are seeing uh, the market closed that day in the positive territory, 0.29%, and of course, the all share index they way above 51,000 basis, basis point the market cap capitalization which is uh, the total uh, value of all the equities listed on the nigerian stock market there standing at 28 trillion naira uh you look at the volume of trade that happened that day 600.78 million uh, uh volume of shares were actually traded among investors of course on the floor valued at uh, 5.054 billion naira a huge number a huge amount of money there you can talk about that and the deals that exchange hands among investors 4309 deals these are the the highlights of uh, uh, the uh, trading uh, activities uh, on the floor that they moving quickly to the gainers the the stock that gained that day we have the like of Tr assets uh, corporation i mean topping there at 10 percent uh, a huge number there uh, transcorp uh, hotels also there 10 percent uh, and transcorp out also there as well as 9.87 percent you recall that last week assess bank indeed uh, turning their uh, their results uh, the q1 first quarter results uh, uh there uh, last week uh, uh wednesday so probably that is responsible for what we are seeing why the investors actually you know swoop on that stock that uh, uh on that uh, thursday that's the last trading day uh, of the uh, of last week before the salad break but again moving quickly to the losers which stocks are in the bottom half of the table of course we have champions brewery champion brewery doing that they're, they're trading negative there 9.96 percent uh followed by jazz bank of course 8.42 uh, percent and cortex if you know cortex is a uh, it's a cable manufacturing industry listed on the balls of the of the on the on the nigerian balls 4.35 uh, uh, percent so these stocks actually you know uh, didn't do well uh on the floor uh that they probably because of profit taken by uh investors or the shareholders of these companies actually responsible of course for what happened of you know when uh, uh, festivity salah uh, christmas or whatever is coming you see a lot of people you know disposing their holdings for cash so probably that was what what was responsible for why we have these uh, three stocks uh, probably on the losing side last week hopefully maybe by this week they should be able to climb up and of course you know maybe among the gainers uh, uh this week uh, quickly look at uh, what we have on the market movers the top trade stocks uh what we have we have the transcorp they've been there since the beginning of last week and they have remained you know very very prominent in the market sector we have the the uh huge number there two for one million volume of shares traded by the investors of that company uh that's a huge number you also have assets holdings assets holdings has uh, come to the fore just like we said earlier they're turning their uh reports assets bank turning their reports last week the first quarter report last week and that has really you know uh, uh attracted quite a, a, lot, a whole lot of investors of that company and we are seeing them there uh, doing very well there on the activity chart 1. 152 million volume of shares and of course to complete our the three top uh, 
market movers, we are watching this uh, 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 on the show today. We have a UBA, United Bank for Africa, uh, doing a 39.2 million volume of shares. That's a, a, a very huge number, probably uh, a whole lot of uh, uh, interest there in the stocks of this uh, uh, company. And I quickly look at what the sectors, how did the sectors fare that day? Uh, if you look at it, in NG NGS Consumer Goods is uh, not really doing so well that day, 0.02%. Uh, uh, if you look at uh, what we showed you from the gainers, the losers, and of course down to the top trades, uh, you did not see any of the uh, consumer goods there, probably uh, right responsible, why you are seeing them down there, 0.02%. Uh, if you go to in the industrial, of course, Earlier we talked about the Cortex cable, manuf a cable manufacturing firm, but again that does not help their cost. They are down, energy, NGS Industrial down 0.09%. Uh, percent. I go to the, uh, mean the insurance sector, we call them penny stocks. Most of the insurance stocks are actually referred to as penny stocks because of how cheap they are on the floor. It's, it's, down, it's, it's very, very strong here uh, at uh, 2.07 percent they are close positive and they go to the oil and gas sector of course one will expect that uh, uh, given the whole lot of uh, roles at the ioc's place in this sector we should expect them to remain very very strong the lack of supply the lack of uh, Moby, of course, are actually, you know, very, very prominent there on the floor. But again, the market uh, down there at 0.22%. And coming down to NGS Banking, who would be surprised at what we are seeing in terms of performance by the banking sector? And you look at them there, 2.90%. Uh, if you look at uh, most of uh, what, we've been show, what we've been, you know, watching since last week from the floor, we saw most of the banking stocks doing very well. The, the, I mean, the turnover that people actually, you know, enjoy, from this sector actually make it you know very very lucrative so uh, i'm not going to advise any investor today but if you want to uh, uh to know where to put your money of course we i uh, enjoy you to keep watching uh business daily where we'll keep you know telling you areas that you can actually put your money especially when you want to invest in stock when you want to invest in the capital market like you are seeing the banking sector of course you saw the uba the assets bank the fidelity bank and the whole jays bank and a whole lot of them actually doing greatly there you see the banking sector there uh, up 2.90%. Uh, That's a very good area put, to put your money. And before we cross over to the stock market, let's quickly look at what the other Af other African markets are actually doing uh, at this time. The African market, uh, we are actually looking at three key markets from Africa today. Uh, you have Lusaka stock market. Lusaka stock market, in case you don't know, is in Zambia. Zambia is in Southern Africa. We see them closing in the last reading day. They are very, very flat. Uh, the ocean is there, 8,021.24 basis points. That was why it ended last week Thursday. Go to Ghana and the next door, our next door neighbor here, Ghana Stock Exchange, also closed very, very strongly. 2.68%. That is a huge number uh, from there. That is uh, the, one of the market that is rivaling in Nigeria in the West Africa, uh, West Africa sub region. There, uh, there strongly there by 26 Eight percent, and of course, NSC. NSC is in Nairobi. Nairobi is in Kenya. Uh, Nigeria. Nairobi stock exchange is in Kenya. So doing this also strong there at zero point three two percent with the market. Uh, uh, I mean, all share there is there one hundred and eight point one six percent. And Nairobi stock exchange is one of the lucrative uh, stock exchange in the Eastern African region. Very very strong stock market. Yeah, I think I can. Uh, if my analysis is there, we let's cross over to the broad streets where uh, Jami Mohamed, who is a stockbroker and of course head of capital market at App Security, joins me via phone for analysis. Good morning, Jami. Good morning, Yusuf. Good morning. It's good to have you again on Business Daily. Thank you very much. Take us through what is happening. The market just, uh, you know, I mean, I mean, resumed today after uh, three or four days break. What's happening at the moment? Yeah, thank you. After the negative uh, trend that we experienced last week, uh, the market resumed this morning, and uh, we have seen the trend uh, continuing in that last two days of last week. Last, we experienced a two-day gain, and the gain has started this morning. And uh, those stocks that have uh, started in that direction uh, were those ones that have gained last week. And we have in the in the in the gainers chart we have uh, um, um, Transcorp, we have Japan, we have Jahiz Bank, we have Access, we have Transcorp. So these are the stories that have been yes. gaining for a while, and they are still on the uh, bullish run. Mm. Uh, mm. So, mm. so 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 when you look at uh, the total 
value traded today in the market. Half 1.7 mm. billion worth of stock traded this money. But only assets bank, only assets bank constitute more than 60% of the trade at this money. Now, so have it. But asset bank alone has traded uh, more than 1 billion uh, of shares this morning. So, and the, the reason for the rally is not unconnected with the uh, uh, mm. uh, the result and mm. dividend declared last week by the company. Mm. No, that, that's, that's interesting. We see assets bank, just like you rightly mentioned, uh, the result is not unconnected with, uh, you know, l last week, like you told us, they're actually turning their Q uh, uh, one res uh, results, and which are uh, very, very impressive. Is that, why, is that one of the driving force now that the investors are actually looking at? Because we also understand that many other companies also turning their results as well. We saw the like of Cadbury as well, did, uh, I mean, did as last week as well. So why is everybody, I mean, I mean going the way, I mean, of the assets bank? Uh, you know, you know, I am even uh, quite surprised on the issue of this quarter one. And my projection earlier before was that the the cash the cash approach that we have in banking sector will affect uh, most of these companies, as we have manufacturers shouting that uh, they were they were clamoring that that cash country that affected their production by. 30%. So they were able to produce 70% capacity then for the quarter one. So my assumption was that it's going to, it's going to affect all the sectors. But as we have it, those that have released so far uh, for quarter one, the quarter one result has been fantastic. Look at the Cadbury. Cadbury grew is a uh, is, uh, is, uh, um, uh, um, uh, um, uh, profit for more than 100%. So these are the things that we, uh, we see Cadbury as this result. We have other companies who have received their, their proper quarter results. The result is, is okay, as we have it this month. So, so the reason why uh, they are having this rally is because of the first quarter results that they have, post, uh, they have uh, posted to the Nigerian Stock Exchange. So, so it, it actually puts everybody on aware that, okay, we're thinking that the first quarter results is not good, but... The, those that have released about five companies have released to this so far. It's only, uh, it's only okay. Most of them are even uh, have mm, uh, growth in their earnings more than what they declare in 2020. First mm. quarter 20. No. That, that's quite impressive there. But before I let you go, uh, Mr. Jamio, we understand that uh, before now, the foreign investors, you know, actually featured prominence in our uh, capital market. Uh, for a while now, we saw that that, uh, you know, uh, uh, their power has, in a way, we too now we saw local investors also coming in. Uh, first of all, we will, we, what is the level of their participation in our market right now? And again, uh, given the gains that we have uh, uh, recorded in the last two or three days uh, before today. What do you think? How do you think? In what and in pattern do you think the market will close today? This is a two in one question. Okay. Let me start from the issue of foreign investors. Foreign investors before now, or about two, five years ago, we used to have them, uh, they have about 70% participation, and um, the uh, local investors are having. Mm -hmm. 30% participation. participation. Mm. So I'm talking of from 2017 or so. So as but as we have it today, it has changed. So we are having less. I don't have exact figure as we, but we are having less than 30% for the participation from foreign investors. Um, and, and we are having uh, 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 more than 70 from car investors. So what changed the narrative for is the issue of uh, uh, foreign equity. You know, the foreign equity regime is, 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 we have a numerous, we have many uh, um, um, platforms that is uh, you know, foreign equity. So if they can unify all different uh, markets of foreign exchange, from black market to effect, uh, 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 from uh, uh, FX import, from uh, mm. all this one, if they can, if they can an official one, if they can unify it to be a single one, it's going to help very very to bring their, uh, their their dollar into the country, mm -hmm. but because they were able to come in, yeah, and, and, and Jamio, because of time, tell us in thirty seconds how did how would the market close today? Your projection? Oh, we believe market should close on the positive note. 
Oh, okay, so we hope the bulls will be sustained today on the floor of the Nigerian stock market. Thank you very much, Jamie Mohamed, for always being there for us for this live update. So we go on a very quick break. When we come back, we'll go into our discussion proper. Stay with us. A Boko Haram crisis that at that time was restricted to Yobe. How secure that they? You can see security men with blood. This is the road leading up to the. Or really, if you look at England squad, you are looking at EPL, you are looking at their names. You are not looking at. Welcome back. Let's move quickly to our discussion today. World Bank has advised Nigeria to unify its multiple exchange rates. <laughs> We've been talking about this for a very long time. I have an economist, Dr. Sambo Ingawa. He joins me via Zoom from Kaduna. Good morning, Dr. Ingawa. Hello, good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, good to see you. Good to see you. Let's quickly go into this, this, this discussion. We've been discussing this, talking about this issue for a very long time. Multiple exchange rates. What do you make of this advice coming from the World Bank? Well, it has been a perennial advice. It has been a perennial discussions also, even among ourselves, um, all through the decades, not just few years, but decades of uh, multiple exchange rate windows have uh, contributed to what you have just finished talking about, uh, the flavor and the appetite of uh, not only uh, foreign investors in our markets, but even within the domestic markets as well. So it, it is really uh, a long-standing issue, and uh, uh, every administration has come and gone and looked at it, played with it, toyed with it, and dropped it, and have left it for, for, for the next one, uh, apparently. So it is, it is one of the key issues that the, uh, the economic management uh, uh, in this country has to look at and really address if the performance of the economy is going to make any headway. Um, the multiple windows ostensibly were developed to probably infuse confidence and manage the foreign exchange regime. But it has finally only uh, resulted in more confusion to an average investor. And uh, uh, not just confusion, but also uh, you know, a demoralization, a discouragement of uh, participation. You know. So we really need to address that. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a long-standing issue. Mm. Now, to what extent do you think this multiple exchange rate has affected the value of Naira? I mean, Naira has been, in a way, dwindling against some of the major foreign currencies. Indeed. See, when you create space and opportunities for arbitrage, and therefore for speculation, you are actually reinforcing the uh, uh, difference between the windows. You are not actually managing them. You are not bringing them. You are not actually helping them to unify. Rather, you are creating incentive to reinforce the gaps and the, and the, and the differences. 
because the arbitrage opportunity creates further deepening of the of the differences. So uh, it is, um, you know, or, you know, for all internal purposes, yeah, economic and. A lot of, of having a, a technical challenges there with Dr. Ingawa. We hope he, we reconnect with him back. We are still talking about the multiple exchange rates uh, we have in, in Nigeria. We've been talking about this so many windows. We have the uh, uh, different kind of windows where this foreign exchange can actually be accessed. You can also talk about the parallel market where the value is higher. I mean, more than triple of what we have on the official uh, exchange rate, which in most cases are not even accessible by uh, Nigeria. Um, the most of Nigerians will now have to rely on, the, uh, of course, the parallel markets to get to have access to forex. So these are some of the challenges the Central Bank of Nigeria has made uh, efforts in a different time to ensure that this uh, 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 thing is resolved. But again, in a way, it, it doesn't seem to be yielding so much result. If you look at what has happened in the last four, five, six years, you see that Naira has lost close to 400% of its value against uh, the US dollar, against the, Euro the British pounds, of course, the European euro, and of course, some of uh, the other major uh, currency. So I think I have a Dr. Sambo is back now. Hello, Dr. Sambo, are you there? Yes, uh, I, I was saying, if, if you create an opportunity for arbitrage and speculation, rather than unify the rate, we are actually going to be expanding them even further. Mm. Because there will be no artificial demand on the commodity. And uh, the fact that the base rate, that is the official rate, is fixed, it means the gaps with other non-official, relatively non-official, because if you look at the different windows, they are just uh, administratively intervened uh, uh, regime. Mm. They are not uh, based on William Dyer, William Salah, free market, you know, and so on. Mm. So the, the, the parallel market, that is the alternative market, will continue going. Okay, uh, um, do Dr. Sambo, we, this is, do you think this is in any way unconnected to the current inflation rate? We saw what the CBN has done with monetary policy. The NPR currently stands at, oh, oh, I mean, above 80 about 18 percent rather, while the inflation rate is there about 22.04 percent, which is 18 year high uh, that we have right now. Do you think, uh, looking at the CBN policies in the last uh, few uh, years, do you think it's actually geared towards strengthening the Naira in any way? Ostensibly, that is the effort. But then it is uh, uh, evidently ineffective. And so we always read, look at it. The inflation regime is above 22, 23%, and the interest rate regime is well below its negative. Mm. So even in that, you are creating incentive for arbitrage within the money market. You see, the triplets the uh, uh, instrument, uh, exchange rate, interest rate, and uh, inflation rate, these are the essential uh, indices that the monetary authorities are supposed to be managing. Now, they are concomitant. The inflation rate and the uh, exchange rate and then the interest rate are, uh, are, are triplets that reinforce one another. In Nigerian case, actually, the fundamental issue is the fact that I mean, the inflation regime, you know, pervades uh, 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 and determines uh, what happens in the foreign exchange market and in the money market. So interest rates, when they become below uh, 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 inflation regime, as we have had for many years, uh, even, you know, for many years, that means within the money market itself, even that is incentive for disincentive for all the uh, military behavior that wants to prevent from failing cannot mm. be encouraged. Uh, you know, and therefore capital formation will not be there, and therefore investment will not be there. Mm. And the economy will not happen you know, mm. because of that, da, 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 and so on. At the extreme market, you will find that it is the inflation that impacts on the market because it determines the aggregate demand, mm. which you know expands it because of inflation. And therefore, uh, put pressure on the foreign exchange that market itself. Not until interest rate regime uh, positive, 
relative to inflation rate. But then okay. where the inflation rate is so high again, that is where the quad may start. You cannot mm. just jack up interest rates all in place simply to get poverty. Mm. So the challenge, therefore, is to manage inflation regime in this in this economy. Now, so we need to trade where uh, the sources of our inflation problems and be able to need it in the bank so that we can have sanity in the various markets. For mm. example, market, the money market and in the uh, general output of the economy. Mm. So, mm. Do, do, Dr. Sambo, just in 40 seconds, in 30 or 40 seconds, you talked about... Uh, uh, managing inflation rate, and of course, that is what CBN yeah. has been trying to do in the last couple of meetings that it has had. I mean, uh, Monetary Policy Committee meeting. But the, the uh, World Bank has indeed again advised that the CBN should continue along that line, continue to tighten the MPR, which in a way uh, have not really yielded any positive result. Do you think it's a very good advice? In, th in 30 seconds, please. Excuse me, that's the only thing the CBN can do. Uh, given the tools at, uh, in, in its hand. But see, the problem is that you cannot just be moving and be following the inflation because this inflation regime in Nigeria, the inflation rate, is going to be going up at infinity. And therefore, that is not the end of the game. The end of the game is to know how to manage, trace the risk the of your inflation problem mm. and need it now. And this is where the negligence of monetary and fiscal policy and fiscal behaviors come. Mm. Our inflation comes from our budgetary behavior. We are Converting Naira, the uh, I mean, oil policy, mm. natural resource policy, Thank you. revenues from oil, you are converting it into Naira and supply, over supplying Naira into the economy. Mm. And Thank you, Dr. Sambo. So we need to go back to that drawing board on the fiscal uh, Th uh, uh, management issue. Thank you so and much. And treat oil money. I must thank, thank you, you, Dr. Sambo Ingawa, for your time on Business Daily. We appreciate your time. Time is not always enough when thank you are having fun in a way. Thank you so much for your time. And that's our show for today. Join us tomorrow for more.